until this point, which is 100 feet down, it doesn't change. So we can find the volume of this cylinder. So right now, well, okay, so it has feet, so it's 100 feet, but we have to change that to inches, so then we can make it match up with the half inch radius. So then we'll make it, so we'll just solve the equation. So point, or, uh, pi times 0.5 squared, times the height, which would be 1,200 inches by just multiplying 100 by 12. And then 25% of that is uh, 300? Yeah, 300. 300 pi would be the volume at all times, even when stretching. So now that we know that, we just need to find something else out. Um, I think it's about where we have said, isn't it? Yeah. And then she's still 80 feet above the ground and is now falling at 40 feet per second. So we know how many feet per second she's falling, but maybe that's not right. Um, okay, so we need to make it send this is R. So we just need to put R on this side of it, so then we have an equation for the radius instead of uh, just volume. So it'd be like radius in respect to volume. That's how the volume equals. Yeah, so uh, I don't know, maybe. Wait, what? Uh, possibly you can divide by r squared. And because you know what v is, you can divide by v squared. So you just get r by. Oh, that'd be very nice. Um, yeah, let's do that. Okay, so we'll put R on that side, so it'd be uh, V divided by R squared, and then that would equal radius, or not radius, pi times the height. And from that point, you're saying you could square root of 300 pi, because that's, that's all it's going to be, right? So okay. Yeah, so um, I could we just say that this is one three hundred pi. Yeah. Okay. And then we want to square root that and square root both sides. Okay. Square root, square root. Okay, so now we have a uh, Oh, the square root of 300 pi. Over R. Pi over R, which then equals. Okay, so that's the volume right there, just in case you forgot. Um, okay. <laughs> And then after this point, there's another step. Can you, can you multiply R to the other side and then divide? Yeah, I don't want to divide it now. R with the body to Yeah, to the body to So if you root 300 pi over over pi over H. Over root of pi over H. Over root pi over H. Equals R. Yeah, that makes sense. If we were looking for an equal to R, could we have just divided yeah, B by pi times A? So we would have gotten there eventually. Um, okay, so now we have this equation for R. Now, I think that we should find the derivative of that. Yeah, no, no help. Oh, Mr. Stewart. Hitting the eyebrows. Yeah, just like, you're screwed, kids. <laughs> Um, let's actually go down a little bit. No, not, not very much, but I mean, now there's more space. Okay, so 
then let's go ahead and find the derivative of that. So then we'll find out. Now let's use that quotient rule. So low times this derivative of which is just one. Yeah. No, it'd be no. zero since it doesn't have any uh, things. So zero. And then minus pi below. Because we need to find the derivative of that, and now we can multiply this by the derivative of that, don't we? Mm -hmm. Or is that only a, this is kind of like a chain rule, isn't it? Because of the uh, uh, power. Stretches, what rate is the radius changing? Radius well, up until, uh, so through 100, it doesn't change at all. It's always 0.5. I think it's with volume. respect to volume because it says to be a cylinder with volume remaining constant. Okay. Mm -hmm. As a core, so DRDD. DRDD? I mean, know that volume is 300 high. Yeah, so that doesn't change at all. So that's just like. So you can't have it with respect to that, that'd be a variable. So I'm, I guess the only other variable that we have is height. But like, I'm not totally sure if we want to use height as a variable. To help you, look at the rates of change that you know of. What rates of change, like you're gonna have to plug in some rates of change. What are the rates of change? Um, the change in height. So no more feet yeah. per second. Feet per second, yeah. I think that's the only one we know. So would it be dr over dh? Because dh would be 40. The rates of change should be with respect to the same thing. So what rate of change do you know? Rate of change of time. Um, so time's time going by at one second, second per second. Of distance per second. Which distance? Height. Okay. So, so height per second. So we know that. So it's per? Uh, per, per, per time. Yeah. Right. It's second. Feet per, it's, it's the rate of change of the height with respect to time. Okay, so, so all the other rates of change should be with respect to the same thing. Right. Which means when we take the derivative of uh, pi h to the one half, <coughs> it should be with respect to time. time. Okay, so let's go back. dh dt then? dh dt. Because that'd be the with respect to derivative of the 
two dh dt. We're writing that this equals dh dt. No, it, it'd be like adding dx on to the end of something. Oh, like, or when you take the derivative of y with respect to x, yeah. it's dy dx. So basically at times, or I guess we can also make it like this. But that wouldn't technically be a chain rule though, because wouldn't there need to be two? No, I think you're right. Because you would need a chain rule if it was 3h, right? And that's it, a number still. Yeah. I don't know, man. <laughs> R equals root 300 pi over pi h, or root pi h. Should all just be over 1 6 squared? This here? Or we cancel out a pi. Or we cancel out a pi here, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Good question. So, you know, I don't see why not. But do you see why yes? And because if you check this out, it'd probably be. Uh, the square root of pi times the square root of pi, and then that wouldn't be the square root of 300 times the square root of uh, pi, so you just delete. Yeah, that sounds good to me. And you, you guys aren't making a chain lead right now, right? No, no, it's not adding pi. Right. So I think that we're okay with her. And then, uh, so. go back, uh, since some of the other maybe brought it up, you scroll up. Remember how he said, uh, that'd be nice. Remember how he said, um, I think Jace said, uh, what, 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 how do I want to say? So we did all this stuff, and we divided by r, and we took the square root, and then I think Jace said, well, couldn't we go back to the beginning and just leave right. r on the one side? Because we, we want to start the denominator, then we take it out of the denominator. Because yeah, okay. we put it in the denominator mm -hmm. in the first place. So if we start over with v equals, well, with 300 pi equals pi r eight or pi r squared h, oh, and we solve for r, how would that look? The, the square root of 300 pi over pi, pi h. times h. So then you could and do it 300 over h, then. and then once we find the derivative, then we'll make it uh, pi with the r h as uh, squared times dh h. dt, and then we know what that is. Just four. So you see, yes. It'd be the same as canceling that square root of pi with the square root of pi. And then we could just find the derivative of that. So find the rate of change of r, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right, take dr dt. Just we just raise the head blob over there. there. Yeah. <coughs> Well, when we take the derivative of that, would we put like the, would we do like a dh dt next to the h derivative, like when we're deriving yeah. that part? And then we'll know that that's 40, so we can just plug in that 40, and then plug in that to the original equation. <laughs> Maybe thinking a little too far ahead. Let's get there and, uh, and it sounds like you're on the right track. Okay, so let's find the derivative of that. Let's try with r prime. Uh, dr d, but it would be like dr dh, wouldn't it? Because there's only an h there. But we need to make it dr dt. Just double tap the uh, the top. Okay, got it. <laughs> dt. Because it's to the one half, the root three hundred times on the 
1 over square root of h. Yeah, would that be okay? Like root 300 times uh, or 1 divided by a square root of h. So root 300 over h squared is 1 half. Oh, God. And then what's that? What's 300 to 1 half? Um, it's, um, it's just a number. It's a number. It's just a number. Yeah. Right, so it's a constant number. What's the derivative of it? Zero. The derivative of it? Yes. Minus, or I think it's minus, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Minus, uh, minus. Uh, square 300. Times one. Times one. <laughs> one one dh dt. Using the derivative and the antiderivative. Yeah, I think that we just need to leave a uh, negative, or like just keep it positive, and then so make just it bring down the power, right? One to h to t. Yeah, so then it would just be one half times h. One half times the square oh, root of h, right. and then and I think that's where we do dh dt. We just throw in the dh dt. And then I'm divided by the square below, which is h. What is it? The square, second square root of. No, because it's h is already oh, being. Oh, yeah. So yeah. it's just oh, square, square root, root of. Okay. That makes sense. Not square root. Okay, let's see. Are there any cool h's that we can just take out? No. Um, <laughs> that's scary. making. Well, this is gone. Yeah, that's gone. So, so that's no more. So then, Still the dhdt and we just leave that out, just like out there. And then, oh man, do we solve for the uh, for dhdt now? So for the rate of time, <coughs> the rate of uh, radius. Okay, so what's dhdt? Forty. Uh, looks like uh, the, the she's falling. So negative forty. Negative h should be eighty. Negative when we're doing the uh, feet per second. 
I think you might be right at the 80 on that. Well, the whole thing we're, we're looking for is related to the rope. A oh, rope okay. is the cylinder that we're looking for. So, oh, yeah. so things outside yeah. of the rope don't yeah. matter. Yeah, and it's negative 300. Negative root 300. Negative root 300. Oh, yeah. Negative root 300. Okay, sweet. So, we just plug it DHTT. in. So, DHTT. So, DRVT equals. Okay. So, if we're, if we're counting the length of the rope that is being positive 100, then wouldn't the, would that be a positive 40 feet per second because it's getting 40 feet longer per second? That's a good point. It is. I don't know. Okay, so it is positive. Right. Sweet. Okay, so I don't know if that's really sweet. Numbers. Okay, so that's 200. 200. 200. 200. Wait, oh yeah, 200 and times 10. So 2,000. 2,000 times. So it's going to be. So Solve all that junk, and that equals DRDT. Are you allowed a calculator on us? No. Uh, so can you just leave it like that? Uh, Started using feet again. Uh -huh. We should have been using feet. Dang it. Okay, so we need to go back to this point. Solve that in my head. Well, come on, man. <laughs> um, yeah, I can't do it. I really <laughs> can't. Try to do what in your head. I'm trying to just like take all this and just like divide it all together. All that. Well, it's all factors, right? So, like, 480 has a factor of 10, and 1200 has a factor of, um, or of, uh, yeah, yeah. 480 has a factor of 10, 1280 has a factor of 10, and, like, like those factors cancel those out if you want to, you know, look at that. Then we can, like, 48, negative 110. That's the right thing. I did it all in my head. Just all in my head. Yeah. 24, 40 over 20. Yeah, root 
do it in my head. Right. <laughs> Erase that. <laughs> <laughs> root 300 over, so let's see, yeah, 480 over 2400 root 4. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so this cancels out with this one to be uh, 10. Shush. And then this cancels and this makes <laughs> something. Stop, can't slide to be 10. Oh my god. 480 over. Alright, so cross the zeros so out. Yeah, we'll wait, divide wait, by wait. 2. You get 48 over 240 root 4. Do we write that down? So the root 300 cancels the root 1200 because it's root 4. Yeah. Root 4 on the bottom. Yeah. So then this becomes root 4. Yeah, and then 480 over 2400 becomes 48 over 240, which can be dumbed down to, to 240. 48 over 240? Yeah, because it's 2400. 24 over 120. 12 over <coughs> 60. One over five root four. Negative one over five root four. Negative one over five root four. Wait, did you want negative the did this one. go? Yeah, negative five. Negative five. Yeah. Um. Wait, two times two equals four. The negative root three hundred over root twelve hundred is root one over four. Yeah, wait. The square root. Would that be negative one tenth then? Yeah. Yeah. It's did you know the answer? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> I didn't guess. I did not guess or if I come up with that. Okay. My mind was blown for a little bit. Yeah. First one, <laughs> How did you do that? Right. I'm more amazed that he didn't guess. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so it's all good. Um, so that would be the rate of change, but like it would be at when it's a uh, one half. And it's at one half. No, uh, what's his face, David? Tyler? Yeah. He did get one negative one time. Yeah, he did. So that's First spank on him being right. Right. So that's inches per second. Is that right? It is. Uh, it seems like it. I mean, you, we canceled all. We got the root 4. We got the 48, 480 into the 2400. It's so high. Let's see. So you guys, uh, you found the value, the, the value of the volume was 300 pi. Right. Okay, what? Inches. Okay, so that's something we needed inches uh, cubed. Right, so we should keep in mind. Okay, and then when we solved, we we had 300 pi inches cubed equals uh, pi r squared h. Right. Okay, then we solved for r, and uh, we found that we got 300 over h. Okay, and then we took the square root, and that was r. Right? Yeah. And we took the derivative. I'm just going to show you how to take the derivative a little easier than all the quotient rule stuff. Cool. Okay. There should be an easier way because you notice how we got the zero there in the yeah, numerator. Right. Okay. That's always going to happen uh, when just just zero. Well, it can be rewritten as a uh, constant times uh, function of h. So we can write, let's say, rewrite this as root 300 over root h mm -hmm. equals root 300. Uh, over 1 times 1 over root h equals root 300 times h to the negative 1 half equals r. Oh, to 
this is what we get. And then we can, we can simplify the square root of 300, right? We didn't need to do all that. We've got the square root of 300 is the square root of uh, 100 times the square root of 3. That's 10 root 3. Oh. Okay, so r equals 10 root 3 uh, h <coughs> to the negative 1 half. Then you take the derivative. Right. So make your life easier by uh, making the function you're about to take the derivative of a little bit simpler. Make the cancellation for 10 and for 2 and all that stuff nice happens. Okay, and then just remember, uh, keep track of the units you're in. We're in inches and inches squared and inches cubed. Oh, it's all in inches. And so whenever we go to plug things in, they should be in inches. But we got that all squared away, right? It was all right. It was all good yeah. work. Very good work. Okay. You know, Chris, like, he, he pretended like he had no idea what was going on, but then at the last minute, he knew everything. I swear. It's true. He solved it all, and I was like, no, dang it. Over? <laughs> you're answer, see you later. Uh, <laughs> not going to be your next class. <laughs> okay. From your observation point, at what rate is the angle elevation to the jumper changing when the radius is half an inch? Okay, well, so uh, what we know is that there's 80 feet here, 60 feet here. Um, we can turn that into inches. Um, why don't we just do that really quick so we don't have to later. Um, 80 times 12 equals some number. 96. 96. <laughs> Wait, 96 inches? Yeah. Oh, no, 960. I just said 16. 960. <laughs> 9,000? <laughs> no, like, 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 there you go. Jeez, hold on, guys, just a second. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> 60 inches. And then 60 times 12, well, that would be uh, 720. There you go. Okay. Um, okay, so what we can tell already is that this never changes because you're staying at this one observation point. The only thing that does change is this side length, which would be opposite to you. This would be adjacent, the one in between you and the point where the guy dies at. Um, yeah, he hits the ground. Yeah. That was a lot of it was a horrible, horrible. It's a, I think a woman. It was a woman. Are you sure? sure. Do you think that they were like? Really no, she died. She <laughs> really did die. Yeah. Sorry, she she died. It was disgusting. So here we would need an equation with r as a variable, because then we can plug r in as one half. Once we get the derivative, we find our answer. Sounds decent to me. I like it. So let's see. An equation that we can use for that is a. Uh, that would be the tangent because opposite over adjacent. So let's just write that out. Tangent. seems kind of bizarre because uh, the, the, the angle is always changing. Like it's changing. Uh, the woman is falling from that point. Mm -hmm. So we, this one doesn't stay constant. This changes. It changes by some amount. Like it's not much of a change. Just kind of fall. Yeah. 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 960 minus 480 Let me ask you a question. Why did you change everything into inches? Because the radius here is inches. We could have just changed half right. feet, I guess. The, the, the saying that the radius is a half inch is just telling you that it's referring to the same moment in time as in part A. Oh, well, we as in. Even that, yeah. Okay. But you think about, like, as far as you watching the person fall and their their distance from the ground and their distance to you and all those things, does that have anything to do with the radius? No. No. no.
only the volume, the questions about the room itself would have to do anything with the radius, right? So, just keep these so we could, the only thing that was in inches was the radius of the yeah. cord, and so we could just leave everything in feet. And ch chance is right, there's the height from the ground is changing, but the distance from you to the, their landing point, let's call it, is not changing. We want to let the in, in related range problems. We want to let things that can change change by leaving them variable. And things that aren't changing, we'll plug, plug in the, the value that they always are. So we'll plug in so eight, 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 eight over seven or eight over eight. Well, we know it's, uh, could we say that we always know that the height is going to be technically above one hundred? So it'd be like one hundred plus h. And the H is somewhere between 80 or er, 100 and 180. But you can let that distance, you can just let it refer change. to any distance you want and call it anything you want. That's what's up. So we don't have to use the length of the cord. We can just say this is what it is. Height 720. We're not doing inches anymore, darn it. You're right, sorry. I, I was caught up in that. Like you know what, man? <laughs> <laughs> I'm having trouble. <laughs> okay. Just erase the inches that are up there so we don't get confused. <laughs> <laughs> are they gone? How can I con? He was trying to highlight them that time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now let's uh let's derive that. That seems like a pretty solid equation for the height. Yeah. So uh, we can do. Well, what if you get h by itself? We could do h by itself, right? Yeah. yeah. 60, right. A sixty tangent equals. Now, oh, I, I, okay, I did. Go ahead. Sorry. Pardon. Right. You might want to derive that. Okay, so, so uh, let's do d h d plus equals. <laughs> T, right? It's the T, T, okay. <laughs> <laughs> then the derivative of tangent, that's either, that's not secant squared, that's the derivative of secant, isn't it? So the derivative of tangent. It's secant tangent? Secant tangent, yeah, it's secant tangent, yeah. So does that mean the derivative of secant is secant squared? Is that relevant? <laughs> well, it's how, it's how <laughs> I remember. That was the sassiest thing I ever remembered. <laughs> It's the way I remember which is the derivative of which, okay? I, do I derive th these derivatives every time? No. no. <laughs> I remember them. So the way I remember it is that uh, basically the derivative of secant is not secant squared. It's not the derivative like itself. It's so then it is secant squared. So the derivative of tangent is secant squared. The derivative of secant is secant tangent. I called it. Okay. I called it. Chance, I never heard you say it. I was going to say that. Secant squared. That's what dh dt equals. For sure. So that's the change in height. Where are we? All right. So the change in height. Any the change in time. Missing? Is that yeah. four chain rule? Chain rule. Oh. oh okay. But theta. So wait. What are we taking the derivative with respect to? Theta. Time. Time. Um, if we were taking the derivative oh, with respect to theta, we'd be done. So it's theta over time then? D theta, so d theta dt. D theta dt. Yeah. D theta dt. D theta, d theta, d theta, d theta. D theta. And then we can change this to 40, right? Dh dt. Well, what is h. h? That's the height. Of what? Oh, the rope. Not mm -hmm. the rope, the distance from the ground. Okay, so what about that 40? That's how it's changing. Negative, uh, it would be negative. Uh, it would be negative. If it was positive, it'd be like that. A would be increasing, but we know it's decreasing. So negative. You can hit that little blue circle there, so you don't have to sit on the ground. Little blue circle. The one above. On the far recorder. right above the recorder. Oh. oh. Recorder. Just don't close the recorder. Ooh. Oh, no. This little guy. That little guy right there. there Whoa! Go. That just gives so much more space. Holy Marlon, why didn't we do that earlier? <laughs> That's ridiculous. Okay, so negative 40 equals 60 
secant squared theta d theta d plus, and then um, so we can just divide out that 60 and yeah. make it, let's see here, two thirds. Two thirds. Negative two thirds equals secant square theta d theta. Okay, so secant square theta d theta dt equals negative two over three. Um, yeah. The rate. So I need. Oh, that's the rate. angle of the Okay, so then let's just divide out. Let's put it. Can we make it two secant squared theta equals d theta dt. Yeah, we need a number for the um, the change of either. Oh gosh, no. Lost it. Well, d theta dt is the thing we want. Yeah. And it should be some number. And what is that number? What, what I mean, what information do we need in order for d theta dt to be equal to just a number? We gotta know what theta is. Can we know what theta is? Yeah. Sixty. Oh no, we don't know what it is. Can we take the? Can we find out what it integral is? Integral yes. of that. It is, this is happening at a very particular moment in time when right, 80 and 60, so we can find the angle of that through tangent to opposite over adjacent 80 over 60. 80 over 60? Or the tangent of theta is equal to 80 over 60. So if we change the theta to 30 over 60? No, the not theta is equal to 80 over 60. The tangent of theta is equal to 80 over 60. The tangent of theta. Oh. We need to solve for theta. 30, 80 over 60. 30 over 60? 80. 80 over 60. Four thirds. Four thirds. Inverse tangent? I don't know what the theta is. Okay, so. Let's see. Um, yeah, I still don't know this trick, so. <laughs> How do you find theta, though? Uh, we need to take the inverse tangent of both sides. No? Yeah. Oh, okay. But man, I'm used to like using a calculator for that kind of business. Yeah. Okay, so, um, sixty degrees. Yeah, I think sixty degrees. How do we do chance? No. Oh. It's no. not sixty. It's it's a right right triangle and if if one angle is sixty the other one must be thirty and oh, if that the other one work. is thirty the side one is another the one half of other side but that doesn't work. So it's just one and one third, just like for ten and another five and twenty. Yeah. So let's say 50. Yeah, a little more than 45. I'd go with this. 60. 60 is a common one. So right, we can't, use you, can't, 60. you can't. Why, why'd you have to say that? <laughs> I think she's lying. Let's just do 60. <laughs> So secant over tangent equals uh a tangent of it all equals cosine over sine. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. So then what's this? Yes. <laughs> um, D 
you just pointed out it's a, it's kind of easy. It's a three, three four, four, five, five right? So this should be whatever multiple this is of three. It should be a hundred. Should be a hundred. Oh, oh no, no, like the like like the long would be a hundred. Yeah. This should be a hundred. Yeah, because yeah. they're times twenty. So five times twenty is hundred. Three times. Okay, hundred. Okay, this is theta, right? Yeah. We actually we don't even need to figure out theta. We just want to know what the secant of theta is, right? Because we would just need the, oh, yeah, right. the secant of theta and square it. Oh. Uh, what's the secant of this angle? Which ratio is that? Uh, I'd be the opposite of cosine. The, oh, the reciprocal of cosine. So, so kind of cosine high is high 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 100 over 60. 100 over 60. So, 5 thirds. 5 thirds. That is negative 2 over 3 times 5 thirds squared. 5 thirds plus theta equals d theta dt. And that's where it equals. <laughs> negative 2 over 3 times 25 over 9 equals negative 2 over the 3 is canceled. 25 over 3 equals negative 6 over 25. Dang. Oh, that was impressive. Negative six over twenty-five what? Inches per second. Feet per second. It's theta dt. So Angles per second. Degrees <laughs> per second. <laughs> Angles per second. Which we ra we measure in radians. Radians per second. Oh. Not degrees. Not degrees. Not degangles. Degangles. <laughs> <laughs> because. Degrees are these arbitrary measurements that just say, let's take a full circle divided into 360 of these things that we'll call degrees. Radians are the actual ways that you measure the angles of a circle using the dimensions of the circle. Right? Yeah. The dimensions of the angle itself. Okay, so when we start doing stuff with angles and stuff, when we find uh, an angle just comparing ratios of things, of, of just properties of the angle itself, we're talking about radians. Alright, okay, let's see. Why did they divide 360? Why did they no, so that's what I was just going to say. Like 400, 400. 400. If you want to go big, we can be a thousand. 360 is divisible, like base 10 numbers are often not divisible by nice things, like, well by a lot oh. of things, like uh, 3, four. Uh, sometimes 4, like 10 is not divisible by 4, though 100 is divisible. Like three, four, but like three sixty is divisible by two, three, four, Six, five, nine, six, not seven. But like a lot of those eight. numbers. So is that why then? Oh, not eight. That's probably why the people who decided three hundred and sixty degrees would make a circle chose three hundred and sixty degrees. They used a base sixty system, probably because sixty is divisible by two, three, four, five, all these numbers that ten is. Good job, everybody. Uh, part two. Yeah, number six. Yeah, got this. All right, this one, I think that we do actually like understand. Okay, it's fine. No, 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 don't, don't go there. No, because I'm questioning how you did it still. Okay, so. So, this is the thing that we're using. That's this. <laughs> Would be why they graphed there. And then for it wants us to find the function uh, with a negative 2 as the x. And the x, you can't really see very well, but it's right there. This isn't that function. This is a different function. But that's OK. That's this. So we know that. So let's just plug in, like, for it wants negative 2. So let's plug in negative 2. So And it starts at 1. So we go from 1 to negative 2. So we need to just find that area, which is 1, 2, 3, times 2, some 6. 6 equals this one. Well, since we're going backwards, it negative. Negative. So that's negative okay, 6. Negative 6. Dang it. Yeah. You, man. And then Sister Stewart would be like, this is like the one. Is this your yeah. way of saying that while we're talking to you, our breath smells better? Yeah. That was kind of mean, bro. Okay, it's so not one to six. Let's find the area. To get me in one go. This triangle, and then this triangle. More subtle. Oh, I see. 
Okay, so we can find this triangle one half base times height, so then the height's two. Two divided by uh, two equals one, and then uh, one times one equals one. Yeah. That's one. And the part where we were kind of having a little bit of discussion about is since this is a negative area, do we take it away from this guy? If we're taking the strict um, definite integral. Yeah. Definite integral sometimes have positive values, sometimes negative values. So it's just, that makes me so angry. The sum of positive and negative values. I don't like negative areas. Don't like them one bit. They're not not good. All right, and then so let's just do this: one, two, three, four. So four times times four is two. Two times two equals four. So then four. negative four sine one minus four equals negative three. So that's the answer for this one. And for what values of x does f of x equal zero? So that's where the, uh, there is no area where it gets canceled out. Oh, we said three. Three. Because at three, or from one to three, yeah. this is one and this is negative one, so that cancel out to be zero. Yeah. What about at one? Well, there, there can't really be from that. One to one. There's no such thing as like an area between one and one. But were you to do that integral, would it come up? Get zero. This is I don't like that just because, like, that's a line. It's a dirty line. You guys, you gotta learn to like me. You're right. So we got two right. values of x. So then that'd be zero, and then uh, three. Not zero. One. 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 One and three. That's the origin. Um. Okay. So yeah, that's the answer for that one. One. And three. And then four values of x is uh, f increasing. And we decided it is uh, after three, so then it'd be, uh, I think, an open bracket for negative two to regular two because it's continues to add area until here. And it starts subtracting. But earlier we had f. Yeah, we had negative six. So the only time that it's actually right, it's increasing. Going from one, so it would be from one, from to, one two. to two then. One to two. Well, let's say you took the area from uh, where x is negative two. Right? Yeah. Where x is negative two. What's the, what's the uh, value of that definite interval one. then? One. One. We're at two? Negative two. two. I don't know. Neg oh, negative, negative two? two. Well, it has to be one to negative two, so if you work from backwards, so that be negative six like we did earlier. Okay, so now let's do it to negative one. So from one to negative one, what would the area of that be? Oh, you're totally right. Because it is increasing at that it's point. It's getting less negative. Yeah, it is. Oh, oh, all right. My bad. So negative two to two is where it's increasing. I haven't been wrong yet. Oh, this is the first. That's nice. Um, um, yeah. So we need to find some maximum values and some minimum values of f. So the only place where it's like actually like really positive is right here. So we can say that two is a uh, maximum. X equals two is where the maximum is. And then, uh, okay, so let's see, this one would be negative six. And then if we went over here, it'd be negative three. So then negative two, X equals negative two would be our minimum. This is our maximum, that's the minimum. At what values of x does the graph of f have points of inflection? Justify your answer. Um, okay, so it goes from negative to positive here when we're uh, just finding the, uh, the value. But that's not like a third derivative. This isn't the graph of a third derivative. Well, this is, it's continuing to get more positive. So this yeah. would still be going up from here. And then here is when it starts to get negative. So would two be the point of inflection? Because it like stops that. going up and it starts going down. Well, there's like no curvature. So like there's or no like that'd be, that'd be the minimum. Well, is there even? So then the point of inflection would be slope. not the minimum, but it looks like it's all the same slope. It's slope, slope. Like, yeah. Right, but it's asking for the minimum of big F. 
at the minimum over here. Well, it's asking for the point of inflection of or big the point F. of inflection, right. Okay, so if big F is the graph, or the, the function for which we want to know three. points of inflection, three. and that's the graph of little f, yeah. what's the relationship of little f to big F? Uh, the little f is the derivative. Little f is the derivative of big F. So what we have here is a, a graph of the derivative of the function that we want to find points of inflection for. Let's go back. Right. Okay, and then. So, what, what do we, if, if we have some function and we want to know its points of inflection, how do we find its points of inflection? Well, we need the third derivative for that one, don't we? Mm -hmm. That's the second, the second derivative. second derivative. The first derivative. Oh, wait, this is the first one. So this is the first derivative, yeah. now we need the second one. That's cool. So we need the derivative of the graph we're looking at. Yeah. What's the deriv what, what does the derivative tell us about that graph? The slope. Okay, okay, so all we need to know about this function to know the second derivative of big F is the slope of this graph. Oh, okay. But then so we have to know what the definition of a point of inflection is. Yeah, when it changes from, uh, it changes concavity. But there isn't like any concavity, right? So there's no curvature. Concav this concavity of big F. This Draw is uh, the second derivative of this concavity. Oh, hoo -hoo. Start at zero, right? Zero. Let's go, slow. Let's go, Let's go zero, 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 zero. Zero, zero. Oh, oh, oh. F starts getting negative. It starts getting negative. Well, it doesn't transition from zero to negative. It jumps. It jumps. Like it's straight. No. No, it like jumps. Jumps. There's no transition from zero. It is. <laughs> Guys, don't laugh. It's instantaneously goes from zero to the next slope, which is what? Down two over one, negative two slope. Oh yeah. So yeah. and then it equals negative two. And then right there. It changes to to what? To one a slope of one. Is a slope of one? One. Right. Uh, one. Up to two over, over three. Oh yeah. yeah. I don't know what I was thinking. Dang it. Oh oh oh. What chance is Okay, so the definition of a point of inflection is where the concavity changes. The definition of the concavity uh, changing, we could think of as the second derivative doing what? Changing from positive to negative or negative to positive. So where does that happen? So we have a three. three. We have not one. No, it's, it's oh, it positive. changes from positive to negative or negative. Oh, wait, to okay, so I was looking at that. Ah, okay. Like that was something. So we it's only zero, have a negative, then it's positive, so only at. That is Thanks, guys. We did it. Maybe. We did do it. A lot of time. <laughs> that was Those last two to tend to be pretty challenging. Oh. Okay. Well, you done. You done good. Oh, thanks. You done good. Hey, my mess. Effort into it, but we had a lot of help too. Um, I thought this first one was really good. Uh, like our collective mind, without my help, we got there with with A. With B, we need a little more help because your you know buddy left you high and dry. Uh, playing an instrument? Is that what you're doing? Yeah. So you got that one fine. I helped you maybe cut down the time on the test that you're gonna spend just by rewriting this function so it's a little bit simpler. You get more stuff canceling so that the canceling you do is not, you know, root 300 through 1200 and stuff like that. Just keep it a little bit more low key. Because if I took dr dt here, I would get negative 1 half times 10, so that's negative 5 uh, root 3 times h to the negative 3 halves, right? Rather than... Uh, Negative root. Wow, well, I don't know. That's something crazy. And this simplifies to negative five root three over h to the three halves. Which, if you remember, we had an h times the square root of h in the denominator of that other derivative, which is the same as h to the three halves, because we do h to the one times h to the one half. You get h to the three halves. 
So it's going to take less time if you simplify functions as much as possible before taking derivatives. All right, so just save some time. Not any more correct than the answer you guys came up with. Um, the other one, even I needed a reminder that if we, like we may not be able to figure out what theta is, but we certainly know all of its trig ratios, right? We can know all those. Um, so where we need secant squared of theta, we don't need to figure out what theta is. We need to figure out what the secant of theta is and then square it. Keep that in mind. Um, just trying to cover some stuff that you know you might want to go back in your notes and stuff and cover. Um, remember what units you're using. Remember, you know, like depending on what you're talking about, that 40 feet per second may be positive, may be negative. Um, you know, and we're talking about H, what is H referring to so that you can keep track of whether something should be positive, whether something should be negative, what exactly we're talking about. And uh, this one went really well. As, as always, this stuff about like points of inflection, maximum, minimum, they're going to test you and make sure that you're not only familiar but fluent in all that language of the definitions of points of inflection and maximum minimum values and all that stuff. Okay, which did really well. I like talking about maximum and minimums here uh, and remembering that it, it would be from negative two to two because even though it's negative, it's getting less negative, less negative, right? And then it's you know less and less and less negative until it gets to its maximum point uh, there. Um, that's good. It was a good drawing of the, of the second derivative in there. Right. You guys feel good? Any questions? All right, then I'm going to give you new paper. Problem.